High level sorts of testing, you can have something called acceptance test of development. So this is more at the user story level. Um, so this is quite from where we talk about system tests type idea. Is we have this idea of what we call cadence, so frequency. You have this very fast, you know, failing, passing, failing, you have a lot of these. And at certain points, then ideally at the end of the sprint, we'll have this idea of acceptance tests, which are sort of more at the boundary level, a complete feature being tested associated with those. Um, so right acceptance tests, you know, they, they fail, we execute, we should pass at some point, demo the new feature, sign off the story, compete to a new story. So it's very story central. Um, now the, one of the challenges here can be is that this may be being done by a completely different team to this group. Now the whole principle of Agile is not because we said we've got this vertical slice through the business, but unfortunately many teams aren't organised that way. It's the software development as a separate group to those fundamentally doing integration. And if this isn't planned, it can cause issues because of this frequency of update. I've, I've had feedback from teams saying this causes real problems on our tests because the code base is constantly changing. So what we test is now out of date because they've had a new release. Uh, so again, it's getting this, this, this cadence right between the different teams has to be planned. The Nirvana is the concept of continuous delivery. So some companies are doing this. So, so people like Google are doing it with Chrome, Mozilla are doing it with Firefox. You don't even know your browsers are being updated, but they are constantly being updated. And it's all to do with a staged build process. So we call so first is you've got the coders working at their local level. So you have an idea, we call it a branch. So you take the code, you branch off the code, you work on that branch. That means you're not affecting. And I do my local code here, you know, this is where I do my TDD, this level is okay for that. At some point I say, well, I'm happy with what I've done. You know, I've got this code and I, I believe I've got all the tests for it, it's solid code, so I can now commit that code to the code base, saying I want to add this to the, the overall software of the whole product. And the aim of this continuous delivery is you have this staged build process. Um, so CI stands for continuous integration. This will then commit to, uh, for example, a repository like GitHub or Bitbucket. You, you, and it, the, the server will detect there's been a new piece of software added. So this software has been committed, it's been added. It will pull that software in and automatically do the integration with all the other software. So the key to this is automation. So rather than somebody manually trying to make this all work and get scripts working where they all link together, is the whole purpose is, is automated. And this will do certain tests, certain maybe subset of tests. And then if it passes that, then it will go to the next stage where we might have sort of user acceptance testing, and then that's automated. And ultimately, this process is automation of build test, build test integration. So build integration test as we go through. And the tests become more and more user-centric as we move down this pipeline. But at any point if we fail, we feed it back to this, you know, and we call it breaking the build. So it's constant. And these may be done, so this, this is typically being done you know, every few minutes, you're doing this cycle. This may be, the first stage here may be saying being done every two hours. You may choose to say, right, I'll wait, you know, two hours, I'll put in all the new code, and I'll do a build of that, that code. So if any of that breaks, we'll feed back now on a subset of the code base. And then if that passes, we might have the next stage is a six hour. So every six hours, we, we then take a broader code base and try and integrate that and build that. And again, check that. And then we, the final one may be a daily build, where we do a final system acceptance build test. And in that test, we then can deploy this new image. Is Google updating that? Yep. In the back, completely in the background. You don't even request now okay. to get update. It's being done automatically. You've got things like the Sky software, you don't even request it. No, it's just, it's just sitting. It's just going automatically. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the intent. Of, so continuous delivery again will, will be affected by what agile technique you're using. So there's two key techniques that we've seen Scrum. So Scrum you'd expect this major update every two weeks because that's your sprint model and so forth. Now this build process can still be done every day because that's the whole idea is you, you find problems early. So as soon as I've, I've finished a work task, 
then I can commit that and it goes through this build process, but won't necessarily be delivered because we'll save delivery until the end of the spring. The other technique called lean or Kanban is a pull model. As soon as something is done, it is, de it is deployed. Yeah, so as soon as the feature is done, all the way through, so you can have multiple deployments potentially in a day. The idea is completely transparent to the user. Now, for software only, again, that can be done. web servers, web features, cloud-based computing, it can be pretty much transparent, that's going on. With embedded, it's a whole different challenge. Now, ultimately, this is what we want, especially for IoT, this is critical, I think, for IoT devices, is that for security reasons, for safety reasons, we want to have this capability to do continuous deployment. The main people have really proved this has been Tesla. So Tesla can do this in the cars. They can push out updates to the cars. Now, there, there is still a level of control, because obviously you don't want an update while you're traveling down the outside lane doing whatever speed you're doing. But it, they, they actually have that capability to push out. Um, where at the moment, a lot of systems either, especially in Venice, don't get updated ever. Have you ever updated your router? Now, it may be being updated by your vendor, test out stuff. Yeah. Um, but the phones are a good example. So, we sometimes refer to this as called OTA, over the air. Okay. So, the phone industry has been a few years. They, they can do so. Your iPhone you know, has been an update recently. It, it suddenly says, oh, there's an update, and you can choose to go through that process. But with cloud based stuff, then it can be, like I say, done completely transparently and automatic. And that's ideally what we want for our humidifiers or our washing machines or whatever. We, we don't want to have to think, oh, I've got to do an update, okay, I'm going to get my laptop, I've got to plug a USB cable, then I've got to download a binary file from the web, then I've got to run up a program to do the update, which is the typical upgrade model at the moment of devices, you know, if you want to do a device. So the Bose system we have at home, if I want to update that, I have, even though it's on our Wi-Fi, I still have to plug it into my laptop, download a new firmware image, and do the update. So it's, it's the responsibility of me as the consumer to do the update. And the whole principle here is that changes. <coughs> so this means that should we have bugs, we can easily push it out. Should we have security breaches, we can easily push it out. So I, I really believe going forward, this is absolutely central to IoT, to Internet of Things, and, and the future of doing good software, embedded software as well. But this is incredibly difficult with embedded. 